Hi, welcome to the Daniel, welcome to the Daniel Star Trek Cast. I'm your host Daniel, and uh, we are here with my co-host Jacob. How you doing, Jacob? Yeah, pretty good. Thanks, Daniel. So let's. So, um, what did we think about uh, Star Trek? Uh, Star Trek Picard episode four, Absolute Candor. I loved it. I thought it was really awesome. Um, I think uh, we start off on that um, ant. Well. I don't know. Um, it, 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 I think it's a really good episode. Um, first of all, l l let me let me ask you what you thought about it first. I thought it was good. Like, I love how they went to. Well, I love how Picard and his team, like his new team now, went to that uh, planet, uh, Candor. What you just said before, uh, and I love how it was like a kind of like backstory at the at the start. How he was like talking to that kid, and then you see he, when Picard goes back to that kid. But he's now older, and he's like, um, isn't he like a Rom Romulan? Yeah, he's a Romulan. Yeah, I love man. He, I think he's one of like the new best characters in Picard in this Picard series. I think, but like for me, like for me, uh, I think this is. I think he's like the coolest character. How like there's one scene uh, where this Romulan's like this Romulan chief. I think he is. And basically, he's like threatening Picard, and he wants to sword fight Picard. And then he jumps in, and like just chops his head off. I'm like, geez, man, brutal. Uh, but yeah, man, I love man that. Yeah, this guy, new guy, who just has came in. I think he could be awesome, and he could bring something to the table. Yeah, definitely. That was like so awesome when he just did that flip. You know that that. that twirl flip he did like the Romulan guy the white guy he, he did a twirl flip and chopped the other guy's head off like I didn't even see that and we saw like I saw like blood coming out of the guy, other guy's neck and then his head fell off I'm like whoa what the heck just happened ouch that's gotta hurt don't you think yeah and, and like, the guy, green, like the green blood that came out of his neck yeah, Man, that, that was, was like yeah, that was like a cool thing. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna feel that tomorrow. Man. Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna feel that tomorrow. Ouch! Yeah. And like, see, they don't see they don't have acid blood. A lot of people say now, like days, oh, like you know, like some of the Romulan death squads, for example, they they uh, they spit acid blood before they die. And I'm like, well, it's not acid blood. It's like a, a pill they have in their mouth. So they, 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 they bite it, they spit acid at you, and then the acid kills them. It's like a suicide pill. You know how spies in the, in the, um, a lot of spies have this, actually all spies, I think all spies have this, um, it's like a suicide pill. If they get captured by the enemy, they just chomp on that thing and they, uh, they die. It's like a cyanide pill. But for Romul for the Romulans, it's like an acid pill. It, it it dissolves their entire bodies. They spit acid at their enemy, and then they dissolve. So that was like, whoa, you know. I mean, but yeah. So they don't have acid blood. They just um, I just want to clear that up. They don't have acid blood. It's just like a pill they have in their mouth. Um, but that's something completely new. We never saw that. But anyways, you know what? That was like, I just want to say, they don't have acid blood. And um, yeah, so like this, what's his name again? This uh, Roman I'll, guy? I'll look it up. Give me a second. Uh, da, da, da. I'll keep talking, Daniel. I'll just look up his name for a minute. Yeah. So like this, this Romulan guy, he's like a, he's like a, he, he learned from a bunch of uh, women how to fight. And it's like a bunch of nuns or like warrior nuns or something, and they um they uh, they they taught him the ways of combat, and uh, yeah, they taught him very well. He's like the best fighter. I think he's like the best fighter I've ever seen in Star Trek. Yeah, well, he's a, yeah, he's a good almost. Fighter. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and then after he killed the Romulan guy. Another another Romulan was about to shoot shoot him. He's like, "Oh yeah, you can fight with a sword, but you can't fight a blaster or like a one of those like you know phaser blasters they have, right?" So <laughs> uh, Daniel, his name's Eleanor. Eleanor, yeah, yeah, Eleanor. A lot of people compare Ellen Elnor, no Elnor, not Eleanor. Elnor. They compare oh, him yeah. to like Legolas from Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah, I could see that. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, because Legolas has long hair and pointy ears, and he's a warrior. And and the same is the same with, with this guy. You know, he's uh, they they compare him, but that, that's that's what makes him cool. You know, El Elnor is cool. He's like Legolas. You know, he's is awesome. And um, there's a lot of similarities between the two characters. I think it's awesome, and um, I'm glad he's a part of the crew. I do want to talk. Uh... About the Borg cube, by the way, Daniel. Um, the Borg cube. Oh yeah. Like, the Borg cube scene. Uh, the ice skating scene when like uh, the twin sister and uh, Na Na Narek. It's hard to pronounce his name, but like yeah, Narek or whatever. I yeah. love that scene. Uh, that scene was incredible. Uh, and yeah. Um, but the the like the Peyton Lisk's character or whatever mm -hmm. her name is. Um, she. She has, I think she has a much greater role and greater, like, part in Star Trek Picard. I, like, I loved seeing her in, um, the Flash, like, the Flash universe's, um, Captain Cold sister, but in Picard, she has a much darker, mysterious role, if you know what I mean. Yeah, she's awesome. I mean, I think she's, I think she's, like, one of the best parts of, Picard, she is and, just so... And I, and I have a feeling she's going to stir up some trouble between Narek uh, and the twin sister, uh, the Destroyer. Yeah. But, you know, I always think... Okay, I think Narek started off as a villain, but I think that Soji is slowly turning him good. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, she's slowly turning him good, and I think that in the end, one of the things I think about that's going to happen in the end is... Um, what's, what's the... Um, What's what's her name again? The Romulan lady? Uh, I can look it up. Give me a sec. Okay, yeah, Peyton List. You know the, the the Romulan the Romulan lady. I think she's gonna try to kill Soji, but then maybe Narek is gonna save her. Jeez, I can't even pronounce that name. It's like the longest name ever. <laughs> um, yeah. Y yeah, it's so hard to pronounce that name. Jeez, it's like L I E U T E N. A N T, whatever that spells. I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. I, it's hard to pronounce her name. Yeah, but Peyton. Yeah, Peyton List character, man. Like that Rom, that Romulan, uh, like chick. She. Yeah. yeah. She's, man. She's brutal, and I think yeah, what you were saying, she has a greater part in all of this. I think. Yeah, but do you think she's gonna die at the end of the season? Like, do you think they're gonna defeat her and she's gonna she's gonna die on the cube, or do you think she's gonna like like usually villains? What they do, they're only there to get blown up in the end. Yeah, but I don't think she's like, the main villain though. That's the thing. I think she could stick around for season two though. Yeah, but you know what? Like, there there are rumors that season two will be about something else. Like, um, um, I don't know. Do Do you watch like how much of Star Trek do you watch? Do you watch Next Generation? Do you watch Voyager? Uh, I've seen Voyager. Like Voyager was good, but it was yeah, it was average, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. So the, there's this character called Q, played by John Delancey, and he's like this, like, like almost he's like almost a god. He's like a person who can appear and reappear. He can control space, time, and um, he comes from a higher dimension called the Q Continuum, and um. I saw this video where it, it was like a leaked video where it showed um, it didn't show the person exactly, but it showed someone in a in a garb that looks like Q. So there are rumors that Q may return at the end of the season, and um, I read rumors that season two will be about a war in the Q continuum, and that's what season two is going to focus on. Oh, nice. And that would be so interesting if they did that. Um, and if there's a war in the Q continuum, that could explain why the Romulan sun went supernova. Because whenever there was a, was a war in the Q continuum, the stars would go supernova and destroy entire systems. So that, that would explain why the Romulan sun went supernova. That, that's a really good explanation. And that would be a good storyline, too, for season two. Yeah, definitely. And also, like, there's rumors that um, uh, Avery Brooks as Captain Sisko would return in Season 2. He's in talks. I really hope he'll do it. You know Captain Sisko from DS9? 
I've I've seen him. Yeah, and the one main person who I'm hoping for, like to come into Picard, I'm hoping possibly for William Shatner, as we all want William Shatner to come back. So I'm hoping he comes back eventually. I don't know if anyone. Yeah, but like, because you you know William Shatner, you want William Shatner to come back too, don't you, Daniel? Oh, definitely. I really want William Shatner to come back. And you know what? This could be his last time, his last chance, because, like, the guy is 88 years old. He's going to go to 89, I think, this year. And I reckon he would make a great fit to come back as old Kirk and just, yeah, make an appearance or something. I don't know. Like, just show a brief appearance of William Shatner. Why can't they? Exactly. Exactly, like, you know, and um, I think for years he said that he wants to return, you know, he wants to return, but they have to make his um, his return memorable, right? They have to make it worth something. That's just because they, they just put him in there for no reason at all. There has to be a reason. Yeah, it has to be a reason for everything, yeah. Yeah, so um, I really hope he returns. Like, I know, like, you know, I talked to, you know, like, okay, um, you know, I've been talking to Andy Trekker lately, and uh, he keeps on telling me, like, oh, you know, it's, it's never, it's never going to happen. William Shatner's never coming back. He doesn't want to come back because um, he knows that Star Trek is, like, controlled by the SJWs now or something. I mean, like, I mean, I don't think Star Trek is SJW, do you? I don't really say that, no. It, there hasn't I mean, been any SJW stuff in Picard at all. Yeah. I mean, there's, been a lot of, there's been a lot of, like, fuck words and stuff. Sorry for the language, yeah. people. But, like, you know, like, th- yeah, like, for sci-fi, there's, it has to be kind of, like, different elements in, in, in ways. I don't know, like, if, if that makes any sense. Like, it has to focus on a story that it'll, people will get invested by. Yeah. Yeah, and definitely. That people, and that people can relate to. So, yeah, I haven't seen any SJW shit in Picard at all yet. Yeah. As of yet. But, yeah, um, overall, yeah, but Picard, episode four, was incredible. Uh, that ending scene, holy shit, man, I was not expecting that. Like, um, yeah, do you want to talk about the ending scene? Oh, yeah. The ending scene was my favorite. Um, okay, oh, so, like, the problem was amazing. Yeah, the Ro- it was like a Romulan ship. Just looks like a Rom. I mean, have you okay? If you watch TOS, you would recognize that that Romulan ship was a TOS Romulan ship, and um, so it's really old. And um, but it looks like kind of new. And um, anyways, it goes up against our hero ship, and then all of a sudden, you know, and and they're getting their asses handed to them. But then all of a sudden, like, a fighter appears out of nowhere and helps our hero ship. And, um, you know, they're, they're having a, they're, they're putting up a good fight together against the Romulan ship. They disable the Romulan ship, and all of a sudden, the, the fighter gets disabled, and it, it, it crashes into the, uh, the shield grid. But before that happens, Picard asks Rafi to beam the, the person on the, the fighter aboard and then they do and then we find out it's seven of nine that was the greatest and, moment seeing yeah. seven of nine back holy shit man i was like what wait seven of nine's back i know i mean i gotta tell you the years have been very good to her she is still she's like hotter than ever i mean i think she's more hot now than she was back in the voyager days she still looks the same as ever like she hasn't aged a day at all Nah, that's some good genetics. Well, she is, isn't she like a robot or android or whatever? Yeah, she's like a, an ex-Borg. She still, see, when you get assimilated by the Borg and then you get de-assimilated, there's still, that Borg stuff is still inside of you. A lot of that stuff is still inside the body. And that's why she hasn't aged today. <laughs> yeah, and she has superior strength and she has superior knowledge. I mean, she, she's smarter and she's stronger. I mean, like, she has beaten up guys, like, twice her size, right? And it's all thanks to, like, her Borg years and stuff. And, like, she does, like, so much... She does, like, several different martial arts. And I'm like, oh, finally, a beautiful blonde girl who does martial arts. My favorite type of girl, you know? Oh, man, next week's episode looks amazing. Like, do you want to talk about next week's trailer? Okay, yeah. So next week, next week they go to um, I think they go to Free Cloud, and um, 
it's it's so awesome and like they, they're looking for um bruce maddox and i hope i hope the guy who plays bruce maddox is the same guy from star trek next generation measure of a man i hope the same actor comes back and um man, and they go, so and they're going to like a nightclub kind of thing and i love like the split like the ending scene of the trailer how seven of nine has like those two guns in her hand that's gonna be the coolest scene i think yeah she's like running and gunning a lot of people complain about that they're like what is this this is not star trek this is like a generic sci-fi show i don't like this it's too violent for me I think it's and gonna I'm be like, good. I think people are gonna yeah. like relate to this episode. It's gonna be like yeah. action packed. It's gonna be something different and new that like Star Trek fans haven't seen yet. So yeah. I think it could. I think it could work. I think this nightclub scene, like this nightclub kind of element kind of thing to Star Trek, could actually work if they do it right. Or yeah, next week's episode. Well, yeah, next week's episode. It, it's going to be really good, you know, and, um, yeah, they go to that casino nightclub thing. It looks like, it looks like, doesn't it look like Canto Bite a little bit? From in a Star way, Wars does, yeah, you know, yeah, in a way it does, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's so cool. We, we, you, we see a little bit, like, there was a, there's a person with angel wings. One to, we saw a clip of that, and that, it was, like, hol they're holographic angel wings, obviously, and, um, it's it's so cool. They mention Angel a, lot, a, a few times in the series. They mention, you know, Raffi says something about seeing angels, and I think they mention Angel a few times in the in this episode in a few episodes. And and then you know what? There's like there's like this rumor that Star Trek Picard season one will connect with Star Trek Discovery season three. I mean, do you think that's possible? Uh, there's always possibilities. As I as I said, there's like. People, okay, there's a rumor, well, there's rumors going around that people want Deep Space Nine characters to appear in Picard. That could happen oh, yeah. too. Like, yeah. I want to I see um, Dax, I think her name is. I want to see Dax come into Picard. That would be cool to see Dax come back. Yeah, but, but Dax, um, just, yeah, Dax died in season six. She was killed right. by Golden Cut. Ah, oh, damn. I know, it sucks. But you never know. I mean, like, maybe they can bring her in some other way because, like, uh, there are infinite universes out there and people coming through and um, was maybe Dax, we see Dax was a relatable character. That's why I, like, I kind of, like, like Dax as a character in Deep Space Nine. You can yeah, what do you, who do you like better? Jadzia or Esri Dax? Uh, I'm going to say the Esri Dax one. Uh, the second one, the female oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, she was cool. Are you still there, Daniel? Uh, we just lost Daniel. <laughs> I think that could happen. Ah, that's a good. Are you back, Daniel? Yep, yeah. Sorry, did I cut out? Yeah, you cut out for a bit. Yeah, a lot of people want to see Quark. Some people want to see Quark. I, I know they're talking to Avery. Well, I don't know this, but there's it's rumored that they're talking to Avery Brooks to come back as Cisco, and I hope he comes back. I really do. He's he's a great captain. Well, there's always possibilities and, with Star definitely. Trek Picard and stuff. So, I, I reckon, mean, there, there, I reckon anything's possible with what Star Trek Picard can do. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's always possibilities, and who can come back and who can not come back. I guess. I know, and that's why people want to move forward with Star Trek, not go backwards. Because if you go backwards, you limit the storytelling capabilities. You limit what you can do, who you can use. You know, you can use more enemies. You can use more villains and threats. And it would be, and cool, and it would be cool to see new characters come into it. Like, instead of the old characters, it would be cool to see new characters, new threats, possibly new, new worlds, too, uh, that they haven't yeah. been to. It would be cool to see that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, uh, what would you rate this episode, Daniel? Okay, because Seven of Nine showed up in the end, especially because of that, I give it a 10 out of 10. She is gorgeous. And she's awesome. I, I love her. She's awesome. I'm going to probably have to say a 9 out of 10 for this. Yeah. We've still got more episodes to come, and more episodes could be better than this, too. 
Like, you know, I know anti Trekker says I got to be more critical. I can't be like, I like this. I like this. I like this. You know, I got to be more critical, but I'm sorry. I just can't find anything wrong with this series. I think it's because. Oh no, it's good. Like it's better than the way Doctor Who's gone lately. Like, yeah. Yeah. Doctor Who's been eh, like episodes of Doctor Who for this season of the era, Jodie Whittaker's era has been not bad, but just ordinary. Um, mm-hmm. I've been still watching Doctor Who, like the new era, but p- like comparing Doctor Who and Star Trek, uh, like this new Star Trek Picard series, Star Trek Picard, se- like the Star Trek Picard series, is way better than Doctor Who at the moment, to be honest. Uh, and yeah, I'm really enjoying Picard. No, definitely, exactly. That that would be so good, and um. Wait a second. Okay. So, anyways, okay. Um, what I like about see, there's so many possibilities, right? There's so many possibilities that can happen in in, in this series. You know, like um, for example, they can do uh, they can do like an episode where Cisco returns, and I have a good idea for a storyline. They could say this: the, the Paul race escaped, and maybe they're going around the gap, the the Alpha Quadrant you know, possessing people, you know, and causing trouble, like the Paul Race did with um, Gold Ducat. That was really cool. And you know when they possess people, that those people become, like, very hard to take down. So it's, like, it's so good. And if there's a war in the continuum, for example, if there's a war in the continuum, that can cause a lot of problems for the future because um, things go supernova, you know the you know the the title, you know the 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 title, you know the show when it starts. You hear the the, the title music. Oh yeah, the, and you, the, the you see a thing. crack. Yeah. yeah, you see a crack. The sky cracks. Yeah, and then it goes down. A lot of people are saying that that is symbolic. They're saying since there's, there's there could be a war in the continuum. Uh, what's it called? Um, reality could be breaking down. You know what that means, right? That means potentially things from other universes can come through to our universe. Yeah. So we we could see things like the Terran Empire. We could see the Terran Empire, and um, you know, like I just I hope the Terran Empire comes through. We could see things from other universes coming through. There's so many possibilities. We could. This is how they can get Kirk back. They could say it's a different version. Of William Shatner's Kirk, that came through. I mean, they could, if they want to do that, and there's always they could, they could, to do that. Always, you know. And you know what? We we don't even know what happened. Okay, like if you watch the TOS episode, Mirror, 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 um, when they go to the Mirror Universe, we don't know what happened to the Mirror Kirk. There was a storyline out there. There was a storyline out there. That for it was supposed to be for Enterprise season five, but we never got a season five, unfortunately. But apparently, Archer was supposed to come across a prison planet, and then they fi- and then they find out that they find they beam down and they find that um, William Shatner's Kirk is there, but it's not. It's it's the evil Kirk. It's the evil Kirk because um, somehow he got transported. To the other universe, to our universe, the past, because uh, Spock would have used that tantalus device on him, and it wouldn't have killed him. It would have sent him to the past of our universe. So that would have been a good storyline. They could do that. They could still do that in some variation. And I really wouldn't. It, wouldn't it be awesome to see Picard come across Evil Kirk? Oh man, that would be cool. Hmm. Yes. I mean, I don't think he's too old to come back, do you? I know he's like, he's going to be 89. He, we, me and Shatner, I think we share the same birthday. It's like March 22nd. And, it, uh... Well, we haven't seen him in, like, ages, so it would be cool to see William Shatner come back, reprise his role as Kirk, so... Exactly. As I said, there's always possibilities with, with Star Trek, Picard, this new series, and it's going really well so far and i'm relating to some of these characters these characters are great 
like Narak, like Narak, um, the Romulan guy who's like um, dating. Oh, he's a great guy. character. Yeah, he's a great character. I can relate to him so much. Like his character is fantastic, and I think, I think, uh, I don't like. Don't get me wrong. I have a theory, and if he does end up turning good, I could see him Narak on Picard's team. To be honest. Oh really? Are, are you serious? Me too. I'm yeah. hoping that happens. Actually. Yeah. If what well, if that's if he becomes good, like if he, if he if he can if he can become good. If the twin can convince him, if the destroyer twin can convince him to become good somehow, and when when they actually finally meet Picard and his new new team, I feel that Narek can actually become good, and that's just my theory. But I think he can turn. I think he can turn around and become good. Oh, definitely. I think so too. Like, um, I'm hoping. Like, what I'm hoping for is like, okay, this is what I think is going to happen. At the end of the series, this is this is a speculation. This is just um, theory, but I think a, I think the Borg cube is a Trojan horse. Do you know what a Trojan horse is, um, Jacob? Kind of like a kind of like a um, oh, what's it called? It's like a trap. Yeah, yeah. Okay, tra- I think it's going to be a Trojan horse. I think that at the end of the season. Everyone is going to go back to the Borg Cube. All the Romulans, all the humans, everybody who's involved is going to go back. And then the Borg are going to activate, and then they're going to assimilate, they're going to ambush everybody, and they're going to assimilate everybody. Oh, that would be cool to see. And then that's how they adapt. That's how they catch up and adapt. They can become a threat again. Yeah, I can see that. And because I love, I love the mention of, well, in this episode, I love the mention of, um, the Klingons. That oh, was did, cool. Did yeah, you mention the Klingons? Yeah, they mentioned the Klingons. They mentioned the Klingons in um, this episode, and there's a possible that there's a possibility Klingons could possibly, I don't know, possibly return somehow. If because- I mean, maybe in season two, maybe in season two, because they're talking about bringing back Worf in season two. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, I really hope so. Worf was a great character. I know they're going to bring back uh, Riker and Troy, I think, next episode. But the thing is, if they're going to, down the road, connect Picard with Discovery, aren't they going to show, well, do you reckon they'll show uh, the new, like, like the new Klingons, possibly, in Picard? Yeah, I know a lot of people don't like the new Klingons, but I do. I like the new Klingons. They're cool. They're much cooler design, though. That's the thing. Exactly, they're scary. And that's one of the things. That's one of the things that Steampunk and I argue about. He hates the new Klingons. Well, he hates new Star Trek, and um, that's fine. He's entitled to his opinion. But um, a lot of people, like the Phantom Menace, for example, on they've been attacking and ripping a new Star Trek to pieces just, just because they hate it. Oh, it's not old Star Trek. It's, well, because it's, what, something it's, different. Not... it's something different and new. And some fans who love the old Star Trek are entitled to their opinions, and with yeah. the new generation now looking looking to the future of Star Trek, it's good to see new things, new elements for Star Trek. Yeah, exactly. Like you know, it, it's it's really it's really good. I mean, yeah, they're entitled to their opinion, of course, but like, it, when, when, if you become toxic hater, like a really toxic hater, that's one thing. You know, I mean, having your opinion is one thing, but if you want to hate something so much. And not only that, but attack other people who do like it, that's not the best thing. That's not good. I mean, we should all respect each other's opinions, right? And yeah, um, of course. Everyone is entitled to their opinions. Yeah, that's exactly. Fine. But the thing is, with, with, uh, with like, this... Same, this same, same with Doctor Who. People are entitled to, like, liking Jodie Whittaker, liking, like, whatever favorite Doctor they like. Like, not saying Jodie Whittaker is a bad, like, actress or anything for Doctor Who. But the way Doctor Who's going at the moment, it's kind of like people are really hating on Jodie Whittaker and the writing and stuff. If Doctor Who could be better writing, like Star Trek, perhaps maybe Doctor Who could be maybe Doctor Who could be strong again eventually. But yeah, definitely. Like, like it's good to see new things like this show Picard, and 
that's what Picard's delivering us, like giving us fans what fans want. Yeah, definitely. And uh, but, I mean, uh, I really overall, hope Daniel, we yeah. kind of have to wrap this cast off after oh. the moment. Do not end us off. Yeah. Well, anyways, um, okay. I mean, all I, I want to say this has been going so well, and I just I hope that everything I I, I said for season two comes to pass. I hope I hope Jerry Ryan I hope uh, Seven of Nine joins the uh, Star Trek uh, Picard. I hope. Do you think she's gonna join the crew? Of course, she's gonna join the crew. Yeah, like like permanently. I think so. Possibly. I, I hope. I really do hope so. I mean, I hope. See, what I'm hoping for is I hope she joins the crew. I hope. Um, you know that Borg Hugh on the on the on the uh, on the Borg cube. I hope Hugh joins the crew. Because we see that he 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 uh, meets Elron or whatever his name is. Um, he meets the other Romulan guy. He meets the Romulan guy, and then they escape the Borg cube. And I hope he joins too. So seven of nine, um, seven of nine, Hugh. You know, like I, uh, Narek. I hope Narek joins. I hope like a lot of people join the crew. So at the end of season one, he grows his crew. I really hope so, but. Completely. You agree. never know. Yeah, completely agree. So exactly. I mean, I just I give it a ten out of ten. I love this show. I think it's so awesome, and I hope it. I hope the rumors are true. I hope it connects with Discovery. Well, uh, to to that, um, yeah, we'll wrap this up, Daniel. Uh, do you want to say goodbye? All right. So, anyways, um, bye, guys. Uh, it's Saturday, February fifteenth, twenty twenty. God bless. Live long and prosper, and thank you for watching the Daniel Star Trek cast. Who are you looking for? Bruce Flores. I found him. We must extract him. Are you serious sending us down there looking like this? We really need to sell this. We need to show a little panache. You're killing it. Something's not right. The ambush.